We are back right now with an Eyewitness News exclusive. George Floyd's death has reignited calls for police reform, and we are already starting to see that reform happening all across the country. All this week at 11 o'clock, we are going to be taking a look at some changes that have been made here in our state as a result of past problems. And tonight, Channel 3 Eyewitness News reporter Mike Savino shows us how one Connecticut police department has gone from having a reputation of racism and excessive force to a model for change. We as a police department and we as an agency believe that there is, there is no excuse for excessive use of force. There's no excuse for racism. East Haven Police Chief Ed Lennon tells those gathered at a Black Lives Matter rally that his department has zero tolerance for the kinds of actions that led to the death of George Floyd. In fact, Lennon's department helped organize the rally. We are part of the community. We live here. We send our kids to school here. The moment stands in stark contrast to the department's image just a decade ago when members of the force were targeting Latinos, saying they were harassed by police and were victims of improper use of force. Four officers were ultimately convicted on federal crimes for their conduct, and East Haven police entered a settlement with the U.S. Department of Justice. East Haven in the past has been synonymous with tense relations, and, and we're not going to sit here and deny that that's true. And we have a uh, awesome responsibility to turn that perception around. The Justice Department investigation started in 2009, Findings of the two-year inquiry included a pattern of non-standard and in some cases unacceptable justifications for stops of Latinos. The investigation also found serious incidents of abuse and retaliation for complaints and a failure to remedy a history of discrimination. There didn't seem to be any cause or reason for the stop except they were driving while brown uh, in, uh, in East Haven. Around the same time, 10 people filed a lawsuit against the department, including the owners of My Country Store near the New Haven line. The owners of the store declined to talk for this story, but in the lawsuit, they said police intimidated their Latino customers. As a white guy, uh, you know, uh, and with police and, and family, never would I imagine what a police officer would lie. Reverend James Manship was with a New Haven church at the time. He caught police harassing the store owners and customers on this video. Manship was arrested, charged with disorderly conduct and interfering with police, but the video showed police lied about the account. While the Justice Department investigation focused on the department's actions towards Latinos, African Americans have also felt targeted. Cheryl Franklin is an East Haven resident. We were in the town when my husband and I were dating, and he's getting pulled over for being black in East Haven. And this goes way back, you know, to uh, the 1990s. and. Uh, Malik Jones. It was 1997 when an East Haven police officer shot and killed Malik Jones after chasing him into New Haven from East Haven. When the DOJ finished its 2011 investigation, the East Haven Police Department entered a consent decree or settlement to bring about reforms. I, I think some of our troubling times had to happen to put us where we are now. The 2012 decree called for expanded training for officers. It also required a better process for reviewing civilian complaints and updated policies on when to use force. It also forced the department to engage with the community. It was basically the best way to put it is chaos. Um, nobody knew what was going on. Um, morale was horrible. Lennon says the department had a lack of leadership at the time. A number of officers left, creating the chance to bring in new recruits and a new way of doing things. The department has had more frequent training, looking at best practices and cultural sensitivity. We actually had a history teacher uh, come in and teach us about African-American history. It, it's just getting different perspectives on different things. The department now relies heavily on data to evaluate the performance of each officer and the agency as a whole. The consent decree became the model for former President Barack Obama's 21st Century Policing Initiative. The DOJ ended the decree with East Haven in 2017. Myra Randall knew the department's reputation when she moved from North Haven six years ago. She's seen a change in the department and credits the new hires. You got the older generation out of the department. The department, if you look at the department, they're young. Manship, who has since moved to a church in Meriden, agrees. So the police department uh, today is completely transformed. And because of that, Chief Lennon has been called upon to share the success story with other departments from around the country. From East Haven, Mike Savino, Channel 3 Eyewitness News.